Great job, you will be missed. I know I'm speaking on behalf of everybody, but uh, but thank you for all your service, and uh, like you said, you won't be far away, and I know we'll be calling on you often. Uh, let's see, thank you as always to Family Gardens and Corner Bakery for their generosity and hospitality uh, for today's meeting. Uh, let me introduce today's board packet. On the left-hand side, you'll see the agenda for today's meeting. This is followed by a copy of my report, and this is followed by the consent calendar items. Good morning, Peter. Good morning. Uh, the consent calendar items, which will be the minutes from the last board meeting, the financials from July 2018, and then the board attendance sheet. And this is followed by draft minutes from the one committee that has met since our last board meeting. This would be the business attraction and retention committee. Uh, moving to the right hand side, you'll see some items that pertain to today's agenda. Uh, the first item here, which is entitled uh, Department Report Points on Westwood Neighborhood Council Boundary and Board Structure mm -hmm. Proposals. This pertains to agenda item A. The second item, which is a letter with UCLA's head, <coughs> pertains to agenda item B. And the third item, the 2018 Westwood Stakeholder Survey, pertains to agenda item D. And then after that, you'll see a one-page document, which is a board uh, contact information sheet, which has updated information with everybody um, in their email address. Uh, moving on to my report, I'm just going to highlight a few things. For one, tote bags for all. This is uh, something the bar committee has been working on. Um, these are items that we're going to be uh, giving away uh, at our movie night. Um, we're going to incorporate them into our block party and events and the farmer's market and try to figure out how we do promotions with uh, buy X number of groceries at the market, get a free bag. So we have, we have quite a few of these. They're actually dominating our office right now. So we're excited to give everybody one. And uh, please use it, show your friends. Uh, moving on to the report, uh, a few items I'm gonna to touch on affecting homelessness. A week ago on Monday, we hosted a pop-up access center in partnership with the Westwood Presbyterian Church. Um, the purpose of the pop-up event was to bring our local homeless population to a one, one specific location um, and offer them uh, food, clothing, hygiene kits, an opportunity to take a shower, um, but also more importantly, connect them with service providers. Um, so we had a number of service providers there. So it was the approximately 20 or so homeless individuals that came, we knew most or all of them, I believe. Uh, they were connected with St. St. Joseph's, uh, Department of Mental Health, lots of have, uh, Shower Hope, the VA, Healthy Housing Foundation, and then uh, Share Collaborative Housing. So the event went really well. I know a lot of important connections were made. You, Kevin? A lot of important connections were made. We're looking forward to following up on this, doing a debrief, but this is an event that we hope to do more often in the future. Uh, tree trimming, as everybody can probably tell or has seen in action, we are trimming all the trees in the district. They look terrific. We're really excited about how this project is coming out. Uh, the Broxton public parking structure, we've been really focused on improving the maintenance of the structure. And in doing so, we push for the structure to be pressure washed. This has happened. The latest thing that's happened is they've uh, repaired the surface coat on the roof. So if you've ever been up to the roof of the Broxton structure, it's horrific. It's all peeling and coming up. It's the, probably the slipperiest snow slip <laughs> surface you could imagine. So they are repairing or have repaired that. And the last piece is to have the structure painted. So looking forward to that. Uh, two more items to touch on, uh, the Westwood Forward, Northwestwood Neighborhood Council item. The Board of Neighborhood Commissioners is going to have a hearing on August 27th 
The uh, time and location, I think, are still to be determined. Uh, this meeting will go over the bylaws for both the Northwest Neighbor Council and the Neighbor Council. And among other things, they're going to be talking about the shared resource item, which is item A on our agenda today. And then last but certainly not least, uh, save the date, November 8th, which is a Thursday, we're going to be having our annual meeting uh, at the Hammer Museum and the Billy Wilder Theater. So we're very excited about this. Um, again, November 8th in the morning. <coughs> Stay tuned for details and speaker information and an uh, official save the date email, but if you guys could put that on your calendars now, I'd appreciate it. That's what I have. We have All some right. public input. Public comment. Mm -hmm. Dean Sam. Sure. Um, good morning, everybody. Just want to, in no particular order, um, I just want to highly recommend if you've not had a chance to go right across the street to see the Made in LA exhibit that Andy Feldman and her team have put together. It's a world class exhibit. Um, they do this at the biennial, so this is, I think, the third iteration. It's the best ever. It's fantastic and free every day. <coughs> it's an awesome show. I think it continues till the 2nd of September. To open Tuesday through Sunday. Uh, close only on Monday, so don't miss that. Remember, uh, the Geffen new season kicks off on the 4th of September. Um, they've got a great new season. They have a new <coughs> director. And again, thanks to UCLA Arts for this anchor that is coming up. And I just want to um, like to share some good news. Um, always like to do that. Um, some of you may have heard, so forgive me if you haven't. But there's a lot of good folks uh, leases that have been signed um, in no particular order. I think most of you have discovered, or hopefully, you've discovered a new fellow restaurant that opened at the former site of the Glen and Martin Kitchen and the old, if you, old timers remember, it is the Mustache Cafe, the legendary Mustache Cafe. I see some nods in the room. And uh, Phil Camino, he put together a great team. He's got a fantastic chef, um, Michael Bryan, who came from Cliff's Edge, and Joe's Restaurant, mm -hmm. and that became great credentials. They're open for lunch now, 11 to 3. They'll be attending to dinner once they get their final permitting and licensing. So that's up the street. Um, Sweet Greens, you may have not heard this, but they have signed a lease coming into Westwood. We're going to say sadly goodbye to an anchor business. Um, uh, Headlines Diner, which has been in the village for 30 plus years. We all remember its brilliance, of course. And it's going to be leaving at the end of their lease, I think April or May. And Sweet Greens, which is a fantastic operator. Um, they have a number of locations here in the Southern California market nationally as well. They're going to be taking that space and a little bit more on the Ken Roth side. So that whole corner is going to change. And then ROC, um, which is uh, part of uh, ROC, which is on Sotel, very successful dumpling and noodle location, is going to be opening at the old Noodle Planet, Noodle World, or if you're really an old timer, the McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's. I will just quickly finish up. And they're going to be opening up, um, it's going to be called Dan's Dumpling and Noodle. It will not be branded as ROC. And then finally, um, I just want to share with you this is just so exciting. And really props to, Josh is not here, but Josh and Jim Rosenfeld, who have landed a fantastic new tenant. Um, a world-class um, operator, her name is Dana Slatkin. She was the founder of the Beverly Hills Farmer's Market, which is incredible. Culinary trained chef from Hyde Park, New York, from Culinary Institute. <coughs> She's going to be opening up in a tiny little space that we remember as Saks Teriyaki. You won't believe what it's going to be transformed into. Um, it's going to look like this when it's done. These plans, by the way, just got filed yesterday with the planning department, so they're getting their entitlements. But it's going to be this building right here next to Muriel Shops and Jewelers is here, and Tender Greens is here, and Christian Sun's reading room is here. Kind of a gorgeous courtyard, and um, they're going to historically restore the building. And the interior patio, which is nothing to look at now, is going to end up looking something like this with a beautiful tree in the middle. It's going to be world class, and that's um, going to be called Violet, by the way. It's going to be called Violet, and it's going to be not just a restaurant but also a cooking school. She has a 12-year-old established clientele with many major celebrities that we all know the names of who have been taking cooking classes from Dana for a dozen years, and she's going to be bringing that to the So I just want to share that. Thank you. Thank you. Phil? A very wise baseball coach once told me, the day I stop yelling at you, the day I stop telling you to do it again, is the day you need to start worrying. Um, and this, he was saying that if I don't have anything to say to you, and I'm not yelling at you, it means I, I don't even care about you anymore. So I'm not there with a bit yet. Um, I've been close a few times, but um, there's a few nagging things. I don't understand why I don't have lights on Wayburn yet. Seven years. Um, keep hearing infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. There's money out there. I know you have the money to put the lights up. If this is a hissy fit, the bid wants to play with me, fine. Keep playing it. It's just, it makes you guys look bad. 
make the bid look bad, make the weapon look bad. It's, it's time to put aside your, your anger with me or whatever it is um, and put, put, put the lights up. Um, we spend thousands of dollars, uh, manpower hours, on farmer's market fiasco, this, west, this north, western village um, community, count, community council, thousands, of, probably hundreds, probably over $100,000 in, in, in staff time between the two. And you tell me we don't have money to put the infrastructure for lights on Wayburn? The money's there. It's just a matter of what you want to spend the money on. Um, we look, look back at my customers, they, they, they ask why, and I tell them the truth. Now the other thing is the parking lot on Brockton, now I'm charging five bucks after five o'clock when it used to be six. That's just hurting business. It's hurting business, it's hurting the merchants. Fortunately, I have a couple spaces behind my stores, so I tell my customers to park there, but if you really want, if you really, if you really want to hurt businesses, just keep doing stuff like that. I keep saying, well, we didn't have a choice. Of course you have a choice. DOT would listen to the bid, they'll listen to the council office. This was done in cooperation with the bid and the council office. That was, was a bad move. Um, it doesn't affect me as much as some of the other people in my block who, who don't have any parking time in the building. So anyhow, I'm here to stay um, until the bitter end, I suppose. Um, so that's it. Thank you. So we'll move to uh, committee reports. Dean, are you giving the board? I suppose I am. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, so we had a business attraction and retention meeting on August 2nd. Uh, covered a few important issues. We had a uh, presentation and discussion about the UCLA block party. They have expanded their footprint uh, this year, um, changed some of the entertainment features that are coming in. There's going to be an inflatable slide, human foosball, an oversized twister game, all that kind of stuff. A few different stages for live music and DJ. Uh, sounds like they're going to be closing up a little bit earlier this time. There'll be more of a directed end, so everything will sort of clear out when it is over. We're expecting uh, about, what was it, 8,000, 10,000 uh, students to come down. Again, this is going to be all of the first years come down in groups of about 2,000, 1,800, 2,000 kids um, in waves so everybody doesn't show up all at once. Uh, there are some uh, wonderful and generous um, food sponsors, though not nearly enough, which was part of our discussion. Uh, thank you to uh, Steve and his friends at uh, Sweet Pin Poke um, for coming out again this year. Um, but there was a discussion about that there needs to be a little more outreach to get more food vendors and more village participation in general. Um, so hopefully uh, the, uh, the people who are putting this on at UCLA took that to heart and are making another round through the village. One thing that was noted was that there's a really good chance that a lot of businesses don't know that they are privy to a free booth. So if they wanted to be at the event, it is free for Westwood businesses if they wanted to be there offering something, whether it's paperwork or a sample or something like that. So please spread the word on that. And then there was a discussion about whether or not students should be given wristbands um, to uh, specifically with regard to food merchants or anybody else who wasn't giving away something for free, that the amount that they're already offering to give is a fairly significant amount. And because this is a public, open to the public event, you have transients and other residents and other people coming in that we don't know how many that will amount to and as this event continues to grow over the years or even this year, uh, it could be a real burden on those businesses and they could run out of product, which is really there for them to introduce themselves to the new incoming students. So there was a discussion about that, um, which I believe is still um, being discussed with the block party organizers um, and our opinion and our uh, involvement in that. Uh, then we had a presentation from a couple of young gentlemen, uh, Mateo and Jeffrey, from The Future is Art. Uh, again, as you can see here, it's, uh, they're using concept art to increase social awareness and raise money for social campaigns. Um, they are about to have their first ever event, or maybe it's past now, I don't remember the date, um, in yeah, Santa Monica, September 21st, right? Um, in Santa Monica, but we were in discussion about that it sounded very exciting and something that would be good for Westwood, both because we like the idea of arts and corporate in the community, but also giving back to the community affecting homelessness specifically. Uh, so we're going to see how that first event goes with them and continue uh, some discussion about possibly finding a location for them to do an auction and raise some money and uh, do some good work. Uh, then we proceeded to discuss 
uh, the potential for holiday events. Um, we have decided to discontinue the window decorating contest. Um, obviously, we will still encourage businesses to decorate for the holidays, but we thought that our time and money would be better spent elsewhere. Uh, we're trying to come uh, discuss ideas about doing some kind of a local scavenger hunt that would send families to the different businesses and as they get things that could win prizes, maybe a pet dress up contest, uh, try to um, bring back sort of the uh, farmer's market concert series, but make it a holiday themed concert series during that time of year to just really give the, the village an overall holiday and festive feel. Lastly, we discussed uh, or continued the discussion about different options for um, how to uh, promote Westwood's historical heritage to the public. Um, there was a discussion about the fact that Angel's Walk, which we've discussed previously, is hopefully coming to Westwood. We're at the top of a very short list. Um, thank you again, Steve, for all of your efforts um, and, and all the information you shared with us. That will hopefully be happening, but not for a few years. Uh, so in the meantime, with uh, Westwood's 90th anniversary and UCLA's 100th anniversary coming up next year, there was discussion about uh, tying in with that, talking to Councilmember Koretz, um, help with that, maybe talk with um, creating a, uh, um, an LA self-guided tour uh, that people could use, maybe with printed materials, maybe just with an app, something digital that would be on the bid website that people could use so that we can really, uh, when people do come into the, into the neighborhood, they can really learn about all the amazing things that have happened here over the last hundred years and uh, enjoy Westwood for what it is. Uh, finally, quick update on the Monument Science. We're still working on an MOU uh, to put a large, spectacular spire on top of the dome building that has to be organized through ARBA and the current tenant, the Broxton. Um, I think we're very close to getting that MOU so we can continue <coughs> moving forward with that project. Any questions or? Thank you. All right, move to the consent calendar. There are three items on the consent calendar. The minutes from the July board meeting, financial statements uh, through end of July, and uh, uh, additional information items from the board attendance. So, we make a motion to approve the second. second. Yeah. Any questions, comments, questions? <coughs> Seeing that, none. All in favor of approving the consent calendar? Mm -hmm. All right. Any of everybody put their hand up yep. so we don't need to go down the line for the rest of the uh, So next would be the discussion items. And the first one is the Westwood Business Improvement District as a shared resource. So I'll turn to our staff to give us a quick update on what that issue is. Sure. Uh, thanks, Michael. So this is uh, an issue of or is a request of the Westwood Neighborhood Council in the form of a bylaw change to include the Westwood Business Improvement District and then also Westwood Boulevard from Wilshire Boulevard to Ohio as what would be called a shared resource. So it would be fall under the jurisdiction of both the Westwood Neighborhood Council and the new North Westwood Neighborhood Council. Um, the um, the request is made based on, a, I believe, a couple of uh, issues. One is that there are historic places within Westwood Village and then also uh, what could be considered major thoroughfares, which might mean that the village and the area to the south could qualify as a shared resource. Uh, the document that you have here in your board packets is a response to what I believe is a, a, a a proposal or petition that was submitted by the Westwood Neighborhood Council um, uh, with their bylaw changes. So the items here that are really relevant to our discussion are two and three, uh, which is the opinion of the Department of Labor and Empowerment regarding whether or not the village in the area to the south could be a shared resource based on uh, the fact that there are historic buildings within our district and then also uh, uh, major thoroughfares or busy streets in our district. So to elaborate a little further on those points, the Department of Air Empowerment, it, it appears, is saying that, uh, well, that appears to be saying that the majority of stakeholders in our district did have an election May 22nd and did vote to have Westwood uh, Village, Westwood Business Improvement District, and the area to the south be sectioned off into the new neighborhood council. And that election has a consequence, and that consequence is this area not to be shared. 
So uh, I encourage you to read two and three, and then we can have our discussion. Point order. Why was this put on the agenda? It didn't go to the bar committee. I don't understand why this was put onto the agenda. They don't have to go to the committee. The bar, does, don't most agendas have to go to, to, to the bar committee? Yeah. Well, I, I would add to that, not to sort of back and forth, is that the Department <coughs> uh, of Neighbor Empowerment asked us to weigh in on this item, and then the Board of Neighbor Commissioners is meeting on October, uh, August 27th. So there really wasn't a lot of time for this to go through the normal committee process. Doesn't matter, should it not be the committee process? Okay, so do we have any questions or comments from the board? We have our what, what is the question? What is it that we're discussing? Whether or not we as a board are offering an opinion as to whether there should be a shared area? Correct. That's specifically whether what we're discussing. should be shared between two neighbors. Now. And what is shared, what is that? I'm confused. What does that mean? So, the, it would, so you both count, right now there's the Westwood neighborhood council, I guess, or before the election, the Westwood neighborhood council which has the business improvement district in its jurisdiction. So, for example, our businesses are going to the Westwood Neighborhood Council now and are going through their land use committee and then also through the normal council and talking about you know, CUPs and their businesses. If it's a shared resource, it would have to go, businesses would have to go to two different councils, which, which is the issue that concerns me the most is that it's hard enough to go through one, right. but, but to go through two is, uh, other matter entirely. Well, that was an issue that we, I think we all agreed that we were looking forward to the last time we talked about this was an outcome that resulted in two people who got a report that would not be good. And, you know, a shared resource is typically like a park, fire station. Yeah. Um, this is a fairly liberal interpretation to take a business district and, um, Say that it's a shared resource, and um, yeah. So I guess we've all just got to look at it and say we want two parents to report to it or, uh, or one. And if we have one, do we get to choose which one? No. The North the North Westwood Council, for sure, as per the the recent vote, will have jurisdiction. Okay. The question is, is does the Former existing Westwood Neighborhood Council also have jurisdiction as well. Okay. And before we actually start debating the issue, we have two public comments. I think that questions about getting clarity on what it is we're discussing is helpful. But maybe before we go into the sort of discussion about where the board sits, we go to public comments. So, are there any more sort of clarifying questions about what the issue is? Yeah, you had a question, Jessica, or was it posed? I'm happy to wait till after the comment, maybe somebody will answer it during comments. Yeah, I have no comment. Okay, great. So, uh, Steve, I think you've got a <coughs> Thank you very much, board members. Um, I want to say, uh, Michael, I don't like to disagree with you, and I have immense respect for you, but I have to really disagree with what, something that you said earlier. I think the process here is horrendous. Um, I think issues do generally go through committee for the very reason that people just said we're confused, it's not clear. Of course it's confusing because there's been no background and there's no context. Um, I have to really take issue with the very incomplete summary given by staff. This is a very complicated issue. It can't be talked about in two minutes with any clarity. Um, what I want to say is I, this could have and should have gone through the bar committee because if you recall when your board took your position, that was on the recommendation of the bar committee. It was discussed, there was a forum, public comment, and then a vote was taken, and that's the fair process. But to have this just landed and sprung on the board with no review, there was a bar meeting two weeks ago, and this is not an issue that just cropped up, and this could have easily been agendized, and it could have easily, it should have been discussed. So procedurally, I think it's horrendous. Um, this is, again, it's been very mischaracterized. The city has just a very clear policy with the neighborhood councils, and this is not half-breaking issues here. The city's policy is that where you have facilities that are designed for public use, which Kevin noted, like fire stations, police stations, schools, parks, libraries, they are deemed to be shared resources. The new metro station, I mean, that's clearly going to be a shared resource. That serves everybody. Um, where you have buildings that have historical significance, they are shared resources. It's not an if, it's a, it's a policy. If you, you know, when there's a city monument or a historical building, they are shared. And it also says major thoroughfares are shared. It's, there's no if and or but about it. 
this has been the policy in numerous areas. You can look at the metro station in North Hollywood or by Universal is shared between, I think, Studio City and the Hollywood Hills West, whichever is one on the south side. Um, in Vermont, the whole commercial area of Vermont Avenue is shared between the uh, Wilshire Center Koreatown Neighborhood Council and the Rampart Village Neighborhood Council. I could give you dozens of examples. Um, again, in two minutes, it's impossible to address this, but you've been given such horribly incomplete information. I just want to tell you, whatever you do, you're not going to be able to make an informed decision because this is complicated stuff. Lastly, I'll say that this one-page letter was in response to more than 300 pages of documentation that were submitted. I'm disappointed that your staff gives you a one-page letter, which, is, by the way, was not addressed to you. It's addressed to the neighborhood council, but you were not given one of the pages of the 300 pages of why they asked and why they feel they qualify for shared resources. So that should be really clear. You're being given very incomplete information. Uh, Michael Skiles. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and also thank you for your service uh, thus far, and look forward to um, new UCLA representation. Uh, not to say that the old one wasn't absolutely spectacular. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, for those of you who don't remember, in 2003, we had a governor recall election and replaced Governor Gray Davis with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Imagine for a second that as soon as that happened, uh, Davis misconstrued a bunch of laws and said, okay, congratulations, Arnold. This means we have to share the governor's mansion and we have to share the governor's office. And I'm gonna look at bills and decide whether I wanna sign and veto them. And uh, after I'm done, you can decide if you wanna concur. And if we don't concur, then uh, the California Supreme Court can figure out how to interpret the bicameral will of the governor in those circumstances. I'm sure they'll be few and far between. Thankfully that didn't happen because that would have been absurd. Instead, Davis conceded, facilitated a peaceful transition of power. That's what we do in a democracy. We respect the will of the voters. Uh, so I'm asking you today to acknowledge what the will of the voters was here. It wasn't to create some weird bicameral system. It wasn't to split the baby in half. It was to acknowledge that Westwood is ready for a change in leadership that will better reflect the values of our village community and move this community forward. Secondly, uh, as has been mentioned many a time, I think we should all acknowledge that the status quo is unacceptable and businesses already have far too much of a burden going into this one neighbor council. Take just this Broxton Brewery. Over the last year and a half, they've had to go back to the neighbor council and its committees uh, 10 times, plus at least three appeals that I know of, it's trips to the DRB, alcohol and um, tobacco, you know, so many, or ABC rather, so many layers of bureaucracy. Why add another? Let's say no to that. Thank you so much. I have one comment on Yeah, go ahead, Phil. Um, the characterization of them having come to the to neighborhood council 10 times is, is completely wrong. Um, the neighborhood committee has nothing to do with alcohol permits. We have nothing to do with the uh, DRB. We have nothing to do with 90% of what Roxanne had to go through. Appeals had nothing to do with us. The neighborhood council did not file any appeals uh, that would force the Roxanne to go through any hoops. Um, so to characterize the neighborhood council as our fault for that is just an injustice. Um, the the election, sort of saying it was rigged, it was just it was it was a travesty. They were hoarding students down Bruin Walk, offering them pizza to go in and vote. Not true. It's totally true. I have witnesses. And if you want me to bring witnesses next time, I will bring them. Okay. There's so many lies and half truths being tossed around on this that it's just it's just I can't even begin. I don't even know where to start. You should wait until you see the booklet that we presented to them in regards to shared resource. It's about 300 pages. Every board member should read that before you vote on this. It would clearly show that Western Village is shared resource. Um, this is yet another example of time and money being spent on the issue that does not concern the bid. Um, it's just it's gone to the point now. Clean, safe, and beautiful. I don't know where this falls in clean, safe, and beautiful, but I don't think this issue falls inside clean, safe, and beautiful at all. So I don't know, we even know why we're discussing this here. It's a waste of time, it's a waste of money, and, it's, and the bid is not supposed to be political. This is a very political issue. 
and we should not be taking a stance on, on, a, on a political issue. Otherwise, you're going to be forced to take a stance on other political issues, and that's not what the bid's for. So be very careful that you don't get down a slippery slope of having to back a, a very political issue, because the next one that comes up, you're going to have to involve yourself one way or the other, because you're going to have a history of it. And this is my word of advice. Thank you. Jessica, you your hand. Um, well, I have a question and a comment. Um, I spoke with Michael Fong about this from the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment, and what he told me, I asked him a number of questions, but one of the things he told me was that um, there are no neighborhood, existing neighborhood councils that share a business district like this one which is different than what Steve said. Uh, so I was curious if anybody had any more information about that particular piece. But the, the comment I would make is that as a commercial landlord, when I'm trying to lease space, when I talk to brokers and <clears throat> encourage them to bring tenants to Westwood Village, the comment that I get most often is that the process in Westwood Village is so cumbersome and that the brokers have heard so many things and have had clients who've experienced such a difficult time between the neighborhood council and the DRB and and uh, they it just takes too long and it's too expensive to get a business opened up. And the idea of having two neighborhood councils, it doesn't matter whether they're pro-business or anti-business, just having to go to two different neighborhood councils, two different land use committees, I, 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 I think that is against what we are trying to do. We're trying to attract business here and retain businesses to stay here. I think that in addition to clean, keeping the place clean, safe, and beautiful, that is our main focus, to attract and retain. And I think having two of anything would be bad. It's, this isn't about a neighborhood council, this is ha about having two parents, as you said. And um, I don't think that would be moving us forward in any way. We also reached out to the city attorney and Don to figure out how they were looking at this. And Mike Fong said the same thing to me. Um, you know, we talked about it would be like Coretz and Bonin sharing a district. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what pandemonium that would be. And, you know, I guess, well, we're not going to weigh in on what they submitted and whether or not uh, what they submitted was right. I think looking at the preliminary ruling coming out of Don, they're making a recommendation that not be a shared resource. And I, I think our focus should be on do we agree with this preliminary recommendation or not? And, you know, we were very concerned because we own a lot of property here. Most of ours is developed. Um, so it's not really gonna change. But for people that are south of Westwood, it might change over time, especially with the income of the subway. And um, it, it, it's just not how it's supposed to work, where you're supposed to go to two different groups that are advisory in nature only, and then have to deal with the city. Um, uh, that's not very pro-business, so I think we're here to promote businesses. No, it's been bandied about as where elections have consequences. We did submit this to the general public and all the people, the business leaders, the employees, and they decided that they didn't want what they previously had. And quite frankly, I sat with the neighborhood council and I went with Phil and I tried to show them, for example, in the simple task of getting approval for a restaurant with a liquor license that of the 30 plus requirements that they should be called down to maybe four or five. They agreed with me, I just saw the last one, it up to 15 again. My point is this, we're here to foster business and we and a vote was taken and the last vote, group of folks who were overseeing that didn't do what the public wanted. And this wasn't a vote to would you like to have a share of resources an alternative, you want to set up a new business district. I think the people have spoken. If you want to set up another time and have another vote to make this shared resource, just go ahead and try, but not now. People have decided, and I think that it's only fair that we honor what the general group of Westwood citizens 
and employees and business owners uh, determine. Thank you. That's my thought. So my thought is that if let's let's assume for a second it is a shared resource, and what's the practicality of that? Well, the practicality of that would be the land use committee for the Westwood Neighborhood Council and the land use committee for the New Neighborhood Council would set a date. The applicant would go to uh, one meeting with both land use committees in attendance, and the, the, the two land use committees would go back and inform their councils what happened, and then a vote would be taken. So the idea of you know massive number, you know, two different meetings, that's just not going to happen. I know that when Michael Metcalf was alive, for example, and the community council had a robust land use committee. Our land use committee would get together with the Westwood Neighborhood Council land use committee, and there'd be one hearing, and then there'd be two letters sent off to Peretz about what was discussed and what the general feeling was. So, you know, I think the same thing would happen here. I worry a little bit again. I mean, I'm you know, sort of a neighborhood person being on the uh, board of the, the Westwood uh, Neighborhood Council and also the vice chair of the community council. Um, it's hard to it's hard to imagine Westwood not being a shared resource between all these different groups, including Westwood Boulevard. I mean, we all use these streets and all use these stores and the historic nature of the the village and the history in general. Uh, the development of Jansk, everything you know surrounding this village is neighborhood centric. So anyway, I'm being a little bit of a devil's advocate here, but that's that's my sense. Okay. Quick question, what's the timing? The Board of Neighborhood Commissioners hearing is Monday, August 27th. Okay. So that's when they will be making their decision. Okay. So we either weigh in by then or, or we, we accept the outcome for that one. Okay. Thank you. Other comments, questions from the board? Is there, is there some, can, can, I, can I clarify some of the comments that some board members made? Sorry, there's already public comments. That there's false, that some board members are making false <coughs> Sorry, the to, process to, doesn't account for that. It doesn't account for lies? So are there comments, uh, other questions from the board? Is there a motion from the board? Before that, I, I would, um, I'm still not entirely sure how I feel about this, but I do want to uh, reiterate for the public comment that while it is not provable necessarily, um, I would argue very strongly that the election was not actually a fair election. Um, having an election center on campus where it could go up to any student and say, do you want the students to have more power in Westwood? And they don't necessarily even know prior to that moment that a neighboring council even existed. And like, yeah, that sounds good. And they go in and vote, whereas all the business owners and the business community and the property owners had to actively go get people and spread the word and get them somewhere to go vote. They weren't just walking on their way to class. It's, uh, while it was democratic, um, I don't actually think that it was a fair election, so I think to put too much stake in that result is a little iffy. Um, that being said, I agree that the idea of having, you know, going through another, another set of hoops when it's already, we've heard the complaints for years, not sound appealing to me. Obviously, we want to fill all these vacancies, and keeping things simple might be the best way to do that. Well, I think, Dean, um, from the digging that I did on the election, trying to sort out who voted for what, um, there were, and I might get these numbers wrong by a little bit, but in orders of magnitude, they're generally correct. There were about 13 or 1,400 votes that were cast up at UCLA. So the other, call it, uh, there were like 3,500 plus in the election. So the rest of the votes primarily came from mail-in or from the Westwood. And um, it seemed like the homeowners who were opposed to it did a much better job on the uh, vote by mail and won that piece of it. But there were still, it was like 57 point something percent to 42 point something percent. And so there were roughly 2,100 votes for. So if there were 13 or 1,400 votes coming out of the students, and we assume that all of those are yes, there were still at least seven or 800 people who were non-student affiliated that were voting for it. So, you know, it, 
I don't think it's fair to cast it as this was just a bunch of students that were staging a coup in the neighborhood because there were a lot of people that were in the neighborhood that were actually voting in favor of it. And many of those folks were actually voting against their interests from the perspective of they were letting it go. Um, and they were willing to entrust it to somebody else because they didn't like what was going on. So, um, you know, it wasn't a close election. Uh, 57 to, to 43 isn't exactly close. And so I think that, and, and I want to say participation was like seven times what happened in the last election. So you can't say that it was just a couple of people that got together that cast votes and we had a weird outcome. So we kind of are where we are. And um, I just have trouble after going through all of that, looking at it and saying, oh, this will be simple, we'll just go through two processes. If, if we scare people away with one, yeah. I think having people weigh in with two is just gonna be utter chaos. At this point though, there's no decision that they would combine their funding. Right now, would it be both council? If it was the same, you know, if they have them both same year, it would be two separate? Correct. Yeah. So. And, and this vote matters because while well, Dunn makes a recommendation, ultimately the board needs to make a decision. And so, you know, if we say nothing, uh, we lose the opportunity to weigh in with the board as to what we think is the right thing for the village. And so, you know, the, I, I think that's why we should recommend to support these draft recommendations of not having to uh, neighborhood councils. Because there's a risk if, if we say nothing and we don't want to take a position, uh, you know, there's a risk if they deem that silence as, as approval. Michael, I'd like to make a motion to, <clears throat> I'm not sure if the motion should be to oppose a shared resource or support the recommendation coming out done. I'm not sure what the, it's, the end result is the same, but I would make a motion to oppose the Westwood Village being a shared resource between the two neighborhood councils. And to support the uh, recommendation. And support the recommendation of Doug. I'll second that. Any uh, discussion or questions about the motion? Um, well, as a property owner with properties that are south of Wilshire that aren't technically in the village, um, I would not want. Uh, I would want to expand that to oppose the shared resources of the major streets too. I accept that amendment to my motion. Could you repeat that one more time, Jim? I think that was already applied. Right? Okay. Yes, but then I'm happy to have it further clarified. So, oppose the shared resource, support the done recommendation. Oppose the shared resource, including major thoroughfares. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you comfortable? Are you comfortable? Other questions, comments? Is it clear what the motion on the table is? All in favor? of So uh, at our last board meeting, we were going through the goals and the progress of each of the committees, and Jessica, it was you, suggested that we create an ad hoc affecting homelessness committee. Um, and uh, this was going to be on the agenda for our Clean State Renewable Committee. That committee was not going to have a quorum, so we would not be 
meet, so we made it here instead. So I was hoping we could have a little further discussion about what exactly this committee might look like, what the purpose of this committee might be, and uh, um, how we can make this work very well. Right. I'm going to turn it over to you. Can I extrapolate a little because bit more I'm about big your mouth vision? Because yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the genesis of my suggestion really came from our discussions last month about uh, what was happening around some of our major retailers here who uh, I, what I was hearing was that they were not um, operating in the best interests of our affected in the homelessness program. Those being uh, CVS, Target, and maybe a few others. And so my thought was when I made the suggestion that we needed to sit down with those people and talk about strategies they could implement that could move our effectiveness, affecting homelessness program forward. So in the months uh, since we last met, um, Andrew and I have spoken about this a few times, and I know uh, staff, mostly uh, Donovan, have been really thinking about what would move the needle. We don't want to form a committee and sit around and spend months talking and not getting anything done. We really want to see progress out there immediately. And uh, the idea that, that Donovan came up with that I, I thought was the best thing and what I'd like to present to everybody here for discussion is to put together a cohort that would include CVS, Target, and Trader Joe's, and Donovan, and whatever board members would be interested, to have three meetings, because if we talk about having an endless committee, we might not be, a, be able to get people to show up. But if we have three meetings where, first meeting we sit down and we talk about what the issues are and what we could do. A second meeting to talk about status, what's working, what's not me working. And then a third meeting to sort of wrap up and figure out strategies moving forward. That might move the needle in a very short period of time, which is what we're looking for. We're looking for action <coughs> on the ground now. Mm -hmm. And we could do that as a test case. Let's see how that kind of ad hoc committee works. And if it doesn't work, we can come back and talk about doing something different. So that's the proposal that I wanted to put forward for discussion among all the parties here, to put together a small cohort of people who have, uh, who are facing the biggest issues, who have the ability to really implement some change and set up three meetings. I can add to that. I would say that CBS, <coughs> uh, Target, and Trader Joe's are areas of high impact. Uh, they are impacted, and and often their actions will impact the rest of our district. Um, uh, Nikki and, and Ron and Donovan can probably uh, go into a little more detail on those issues. But if we're able to bring them to the table and talk about how they might be able to change some of their policies and how they might be able to impact some of our policies, um, I think it really can help. I, I, maybe Donovan would like to speak about this, or maybe not. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll speak about it. Uh, I do think that some policies are, are um, being had inside the village are often uh, reversed when it comes down to some of the businesses that aren't on board of what the rest of our policies are being enforced. So. When, when we try taking two steps forward, we end up going in reverse because we have other businesses that we've tried reaching out to to get on board with our program that aren't necessarily giving us the best response. So I think having sitting down and being able to discuss in a, bigger, in, in a, in a more private setting would definitely help things go forward for us. The question is, is you used the word, you didn't use the word committee. Cohort. Cohort. <laughs> well, something my 16-year-old says a lot. <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't say that word officially in any way. I meant just a, a group of people yeah. getting together to try to move, move the needle. Well, and the good thing about that group is they're national. So they really know what they're doing when it comes to security and how to help things like that. Yeah. Well, I, I, I venture to say that the people here really don't know what they're doing. I think Target especially is doing a lot of things that are fostering having homeless people camp out there. At least that's what we heard last month. I mean, I heard that they were allowing people to store their, their full shopping carts sort of on the side. Uh, we shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. 
I think the meetings should be with regional vice presidents, not just the store managers as well. I think it's a very good idea because I don't think the store manager is doing a great job. I mean, like, you know, I go through the target once in a while, I see homeless, you know, in the aisles. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, Miss Mary, who's living basically on CVS property, they're not enforcing their private property rights. And it would seem to me this is a, you know, a regional vice president issue versus a store manager issue. I think we should have both well, yeah. the manager well, and the regional vice president yeah, exactly. so the manager can hear what the regional vice president is saying right right i think that's also bringing the question so if we do this i mean i think the idea of limited meetings at least to get the ball rolling is probably smart we don't yeah. want people uh scared off um so one would be um does that mean that there is no public input and you want public input so that's a question the second question would be because we do have turnover at these businesses and we know that the management is in flux i think there would need to be some kind of continued plan and i don't know if that's something that we discussed now or that's something that would be discussed in those three meetings probably in those three meetings where after that it would be you know a biannual meeting or something like that to make sure that if there is any turnover they know what the policies are because when they come into their store that's probably not going to be what they're being trained and discussed and discussing they're going to be worried about running their store and it would be up to us or this committee or and or donovan to go in there and say this is how your predecessor did it this is the word from your regional manager i think it's a great idea and we wanted to help you in that endeavor to educate you and give you the resources that you need to make this easier for you so but i do have a question about again like i said whether if this is an official ad hoc committee then it's definitely closed door and is that something that we want or don't want i think um we're not going not to call the committee yet but the group could report to the clean safe and beautiful committee so whatever so it could provide updates you know between the first and second meeting between the second and third maybe after the third with how it's going and then i think that committee can implement whatever feedback we get or changes um, and we could you know also invite those stores to come to the clean safe beautiful committee too and talk about how it's all how it's all going um, whatever the group is that we call it that meets with these different businesses, um, it's, it's probably better to be nimble. Maybe it's just, it's in, instead of an actual ad hoc committee, maybe it's just staff with working with these different groups because I can imagine that getting three different businesses and their regional people to come in all at the same time might be a struggle. Um, that's my kind of initial thought. So maybe we go to public comment now, if that's okay. Or, you know, this, this just, it just seems like it would be a good flow from um, your point about having the regional people there. I think, John, you're right. We've got to have the higher up person. So, even though it may be counterintuitive to have this meeting not probe real quickly, I think we ought to push it off a little bit so that we can let these regional people know that this is going to be an important meeting and we want to find out their schedules in advance and try and work it out so that all these three big the retailers that regional people could be at the, at the meeting. So I'm trying to make some advanced calls, find out the schedules would work, and make it important enough that they're going to maybe push it off till September or October so that they'll be, it's too important to just make it a quick meeting. And if I may, part of the pitch on that should be, this isn't just, well, we're concerned with the Westwood location. I'm sure they have these problems at other stores as well, and this could be something very beneficial sure. to all of their businesses. and. And we've got some people who really know what they're talking about and the laws and rules and what we can do about it so hey we have an opportunity to help educate you and improve your business we'd like to invite you in to participate in the process with us. well do we have people that are going to do that as well to help teach them what to do well i mean i think that's um i mean in terms of the laws and i think that donovan and the ambassadors probably have more information than most of them do certainly than we do right um and we can certainly count on them potentially we ask Ragsdale or somebody like that to come in as well just so we do have an officer at you know one or more of those meetings might be a really good idea yeah and something like that we should set that letter up long enough right. in advance of the meeting so that perhaps that might even create a catalyst so that when they come to the meeting they can tell us what they've started to do at least we have a chance to be proactive in getting them to do things without forcing their hand right. what's the long-term plan after this meeting how do we make sure that the managers enforce issues within the store. I think managers oftentimes don't have incentive to ask the homeless person to leave because when the throws a fit or 
punch in the manager and something. So what's the long-term effect after the meeting? So we can train the manager, but then how do we make sure that they have enough incentive to want to go and do these things? I think that's exactly what will be discussed after the meeting. Right. I think that's the whole yeah. point right. of the meeting, yeah. is to figure out that plan. Okay. But you're right, having long-term goals that are sustainable. Yeah. I think having somebody from TV and or the city attorney's office is helpful because mm -hmm. there are laws uh, governing what can and cannot be do be done and you don't need the Starbucks incident here. So I think understanding those parameters would be helpful. So so no other questions you still you had your card in. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering if everyone here is busy. You all have businesses to run, you have property to manage and I'm just wondering maybe if Donovan could partner with some people in the city, and he would basically do what you guys are talking about, but have Donovan work with people in the city, people from the um, Measure H, Measure HH, and get people involved. Donovan could lead it up, maybe, with because you probably know people all, all over the city that could work with you on this, and they just then they can report back to you. I just think that you all, I think you're just too busy doing what you have to do to survive um, your daily lives. And I think this would be a perfect opportunity for Donovan to partner with some people from the city. Um, and Officer, Officer Ragsdale just got back from two months of being on a homeless task force, so he's probably full of information right now. Um, and I just think this is something that should be left to people who can really specialize in this and can really act on it um, at your um, instruction, or they would advise you and then you would say, hey, we can do this, this, and this, we can't do this, this, and this. Um, so I really think that this well, is a great idea that maybe um, they really kind of involve at least one or two from the city, Officer Ragsdale, Donovan and his crew, because um, they really have the most experience. Donovan's on the street. Donovan's been amazing in the village. I mean, I just can't even begin to tell you how effective he's been out there on the streets with very little support from the city. Um, it's just night and day in the past three or four months, so thank you for that. It's been phenomenal. But he has the resources. He, he knows the people who do this for a living, who do this all the time. And I just think that the right way to go would be then the report to you, and you can just discuss it, but let them do the late work. That's it. Thanks. Steve, you have Yeah, thank you. A <clears throat> um, few comments. You left off a critical player that probably has the number one problem, and that is Ralph's. If you think Target has a problem, just go up to Ralph's. It's four to five times the problem. It's maybe the other three combined, so you must engage Ralph's. Um, I also want to suggest that you may want to engage the security for that building, which uh, or the property manager, which is CBRE. There's this very weird like line of demarcation. Target literally will not do anything that's one inch outside their store. They say, oh, that's the property manager. So if there's something going on, just outside their door, they will not engage. Ralph's, similarly. In fact, if shopping carts are on the subway, they say, oh no, we can't have our employees. If they're in the parking garage, they can retrieve them. If they're just outside their door, they will not touch them. So you have to engage the property manager. I believe it's CBRE, it's, it's crazy. Is that owned by teachers? It's owned by yeah. TI Craft, correct. And you, I was gonna say, you may want to even engage with the property owner. And similarly, Denise, I would say, I don't know who handles the security for um, London Apartments, I don't, I, I'm not great, I'm not even sure who's the property manager, Grace Star, whoever it is, but they may need whoever that security force is, I think they need to be part of the conversation. Um, <clears throat> I'll also tell you, I've spoken with the target manager, they have a new manager by the name of Sean, and the gentleman who's sleeping outside their store daily, a very lovely gentleman who is very service resistant as you know, and he goes in and actually spends about twenty to thirty dollars a day from all the money that he can handles. And he's a gentleman where they park his whole shopping cart and luggage by the linen department. They say, Well, he's one of our customers, we can't really do anything about it. He lives inside this the Starbucks seven to eight hours a day. I've talked to the manager of that little Starbucks. I mean it's a crazy situation. But what I also want to say is this is a bigger issue. I mean, even if you know if this is a start, great. But I just want to say to you guys that this is just one problem. With the homeless situation, it's a multifaceted issue, and I really want to say that if this works, I do think you might want to give some thought to having a bigger coalition involving the Avery Council, Community Council, the UCLA, the VA, PD, and others, because homelessness is not going to be solved in three days, three months, three years, maybe ever. So, thank you. 
That concludes uh, the public comments. <laughs> I took a breath. Um, I, I, I think everything that everybody's saying is correct. We're not going to solve the homelessness problem in three meetings. We probably wouldn't solve it in 500 meetings. There are whole bodies looking over this. So my thought in my proposal of just having three meetings is try to do something targeted and Yes, if it works, then we can continue it or copy it or make it larger, but I think we need to do something, and um, I think we should do something soon, although not so soon that we can't get the regional vice presidents there. Um, so maybe the thing to do is to ask staff and Donovan to work with uh, the three, now four, including Ralph's main offenders, seeing when the, all those people can be brought together and Maybe it should be at a clean, safe, and beautiful meeting, if that's possible, or if not. I mean, I'm perfectly happy to not have another committee formed and to not have any more meetings and have staff yet. handle it if everybody feels that, that that's appropriate. Um, I'm open. I think it sends a message to these businesses that the bid is interested enough to actually form an ad hoc committee. And when I think of ad hoc, I think of a temporary committee. Right. So I yes. like this idea of three meetings. Um, and certainly some of us, including myself, were sort of uniquely positioned to talk on this issue. You know, I've been with the OPC, PC Permanent Housing Committee for a decade, I think now, now it's called the People Concerns. So we have, you know, monthly meetings and I'm almost an ambassador to understanding homelessness in our community because I know so much about it. So I'd be happy to attend these meetings with you, Jessica, for sure. Um, and I think, it, I think you know, Phil, you're, you're right in terms of the idea that the broader picture is pretty much the clean, safe, and beautiful committee. You're the one that's you know, going to need to follow up on this. I mean, this ad hoc committee is great to get the ball rolling, certainly give the regional vice presidents the idea that, wow, somebody really cares about this or the business improvement district to form this committee, and we've got to you know, keep our house in order, and then clean, safe, and beautiful can continue to keep the house in order, hopefully. And yeah, we may need to have another ad hoc committee at some point, but just to get the ball rolling, I think it's a really good idea. Jessica makes a great point. You know, you might make it more effective ask them all to be at the same place at the same time so that you could all voice your concerns. Mm -hmm. Let everybody know how concerned the bid is and let the other folks know how concerned the other folks are about what they're going to do to resolve this issue collectively. Right. Good first step is focus. Yeah, yeah. We can follow up individually after that, but just getting everybody in the same room together in our, to voice the collective concern about these large organizations in the village would go a long way towards making sure they understand the severity of the issue. I think everybody likes the idea. We just need to decide what the structure of the idea is, whether we want to have this just be overseen by staff, or we want to make it part of Clean, Safe, and Beautiful, or do we want to form an ad hoc committee that would consist of the mayor, those make four major players, and staff, and John and myself? I think that's a good idea, the ad hoc committee. We make it important enough that they'll get to do that. I think the three meetings to have yeah. members of the board sitting in on that meeting would be a really good thing. And again, you guys may decide at that point that, okay, we got the ball rolling and then we're gonna hand it off to staff and Donovan or whomever, um, but I think at least we get the ball rolling and we should have, I think having some direct involvement would be a good thing. Well, the chair has the power to form an ad hoc committee. Well, as I said, I said, I think the chair has the authority to do that, but it might be valuable to have the support of the entire board if there's a motion to, to direct the chair to do that. Yeah, it has, it has more weight. But I think we can ask him to do it if uh, we have a motion. I'll make the motion that we want to have you, the, the chair, uh, create an ad hoc committee to uh, address the homeless problem with the major players in Westwood. And the members of the board who would make up the ad hoc committee would be Jessica and John. I'll do that. I'll do Did you guys include Donovan on that? Yeah. So that's yeah. part of it, sure. Yeah. 
Right. Ricky falls under major players. And we have a second by Peter. Peter is second. Okay. Any more discussion, comments? Well, one, one thing before we vote, um, just a suggestion. It's funny, I, I've got a colleague in Santa Monica who's meeting with the Santa Monica bid today at their annual meeting, and they're going to be talking about homelessness. And I was at a meeting yesterday in Honolulu, and we were talking about the same thing, so it's not just unique to here. <laughs> and I would suggest that you reach out to Santa Monica, which has seen an uptick and homeless incidents in and around Third Street Promenade. And you know, you have some colleagues who are working there as well. And you guys should at least talk to them about what's working and what's not. And take that back to your committee for how it applies to Westwood. And the Palisades, it's a really tremendous program in Palisades. Mm -hmm. That's what Palisades. Okay. Is there any objection to unanimous consent? Okay. Thank you. Seeing none, the motion passes. Quickly go back to uh, item B. Uh, I do want to introduce uh, Brad Erickson. <coughs> I mentioned earlier, uh, Brad is the uh, executive director for uh, Campus Service Enterprises. He has a rather large portfolio, but probably the most significant aspect of his portfolio is the uh, real estate uh, portfolio for the UCLA that's off campus. So he manages about a million square feet of owned uh, off campus assets and about 1.7 million square feet of leased uh, properties, about 400 different leases, uh, much of which is in the Westwood Village. So I think he brings a very unique and beneficial uh, perspective uh, to this board, which is why I uh, pointed him to it from the UCLA uh, perspective. And he's been in UCLA for almost 30 years uh, coming up to that. And prior to that, he was actually in the private sector in commercial real estate. So such a really fantastic background and a great resource uh, for the campus and I think most of you actually already know him so he's a, 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 good, a good addition and uh, we actually have public comment uh, for that item so unfortunately I'm uh, turning into a pumpkin <laughs> so if I may defer to Jessica as the Keisha. Yo, Mike, did you get the email? some reason I came away from my lunch with Andrew and Michael thinking this was an 8.30 p.m. meeting. I thought at the time, I thought, that's so nice of uh, Skylight Gardens to set aside a space for an evening, dinner time meeting, a Thursday evening. Thought, and then I thought, oh, business must not be so great, but you know, maybe we'll fill the space. So that's my experience. Um, I was born in UCLA to UCLA parents. Uh, Aunts, uncles, cousins, brother, sister, all UCLA grads. Uh, I've been with UCLA 30 years now. I have a daughter who's starting her second year at UCLA Law School. I have two children up at Cal Berkeley, one a freshman and one a senior. So pretty much I just transferred my money from the UC <laughs> to the UC. Um, I'm a guy of a lifelong Bruin. I have known Steve for many years. Um, and uh, I'm thrilled to be on this committee. I have been uh, sort of an active voice at times. Uh, Andrew's heard from me. 
uh, especially with respect to, I guess, clean, safe, and beautiful, and the other issue you touched on today, homelessness. And I hope to be able to make a, an active, supportive contribution in the efforts of this. And I think what I've seen over the years, I'm a resident of Westwood also. I live at, uh, in the faculty housing at uh, Wayburn and Tiverton, a lovely old building, which is one of I think, the first residential buildings constructed here in the village. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm here daily and nightly, and uh, I've seen a lot of, I, I think Westwood is on a great upward trend. It's slow and steady, and I'm not sure that that's not the right pace. Um, you know, might be, some people want it faster, um, but I think it's on the right path, and I really want to do everything I can to uh, encourage that and support that and add to the betterment of the place. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We can hear public comment on this item. There's Steve and Steve and Phil. All right, there's hey. public comment from Steve. Yeah, um, first of all, I wanted, I'm sorry he's not here to hear it. I tried to say it on the way out. I just wanted to express a thank you to Michael Back for his incredible service and time and dedication. And he did say, I'm not, I'm not going away. I'm just not going to be on the board. So he's still up on campus. Um, so that, just wanted to say that. And to Brad, obviously I've known Brad, oh my gosh, way too many years and <laughs> undergrad days. And I think he's going to be a fantastic addition from UCLA and as, as, a, as a Bruin, as a resident, as a stakeholder, as someone who works in this village, who's seen it, who's ups and downs, and hopefully on his up, um, I think he's going to be a fantastic addition. So I just want to say welcome and thank you for your service. And then from Phil. Um, just Brad, welcome. I've heard of your name. Your, your reputation precedes you um, to the board. Um, 30 years of service to UCLA. So, uh, welcome to the board. Anyhow, welcome, welcome to the board. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're going to shut him out. Okay. We're moving on to the last item. All right. Now we're on to item B, the Westwood Stakeholder Survey. Um, a few months ago, NKC put together a survey that's targeted with the people that live, work, or visit Westwood Village. Um, the survey was, we were hoping to understand their experiences better from a visitor's perspective and also what they wanted more of, what they wanted less of, and to take any feedback that they might have. And so Andrew and his team put together all the results from the survey and um, I think he was just going to make a presentation on it. Yep. yep, thank you. Great job, Capisha. <laughs> I'm used to it, I know. You're so I can, I can ask everybody to turn your attention to this document. Um, it's the 2018 Westwood Stakeholder Survey. So as Kapisha uh, mentioned, this is a survey that we released in the early spring of this year, and we closed the survey at the beginning of June of this year. And the Bar Committee has gone over this with a fine tooth comb, so I'm just going to go over sort of the highlights and kind of the top line results now, but feel free to stop me if you have questions. Uh, moving up to uh, the very beginning, page one here, the total respondents and access. Uh, we last did this survey in 2015. We had just over 250 respondents and we had 404 this time. Um, who responded to our survey? Well, about a third of the folks found our survey through our website, about a third found it through social media, and a little less than a third found it through our newsletters. Um, the people who responded were predominantly people who live uh, in Westwood Village, who live on campus, or live in our surrounding neighborhoods, although we did have a non-insignificant number of people who responded who just work here or think Westwood Village is a pretty cool place to hang out. Uh, the gender of the folks who responded, about two-thirds were female, and 45% uh, of respondents were 50 years old or older, which was a bit of a raised a bit of a flag for me because I know our demographics skew younger, um, so just FYI there. Moving to number four, we asked folks their first question, which was to name their top two shopping destinations. 
and we gave them a series of options, but also listed other as an opportunity for people to respond. Uh, Westwood Village was a top two destination. We were behind Century City um, and in front of Third Street Promenade, Beverly Hills, Grove, Brentwood. Uh, when people selected other, they wrote in their choices. We had a lot of uh, online as a choice, and then Culver City were common. Uh, question five, we asked people uh, when the last time they visited Westwood Village, and the majority of people had been here either in the past couple days or in the past week. So that was huge, and that question actually pairs well with question six, which is how often do you visit Westwood Village, and the vast majority of people are visiting us several times a week or daily. So uh, uh, our survey is telling us now that people are, are, are users, <coughs> live around here, and uh, they are frequenting us often. So that's very positive. Uh, moving to number seven, we asked people what they enjoyed most about the village, and the number one response was that it was close to where I live or work. So the proximity was very important to our responders, and that was the main reason why they're choosing Westwood Village. After that, it was the village's proximity to UCLA, and then the fact that it was pedestrian friendly. After that, uh, people commented on the character and architecture of the buildings in the village, um, and our arts and cultural offerings, and so on. Uh, question eight. Andrew, we, I'm sorry, can sure. I ask you a question of about course. question seven? Hmm? Were people allowed to pick more than one thing? Um, question seven. Yes, eight. they were. They were allowed to pick more than one thing. Good question. Sorry, I didn't mention that. I had a quick question about number three, but just to jump back. Uh, mm -hmm. You mentioned the difference, the, the, the skewing of the respondents. Yes. Do we have a, I assume you have a, is there an actual demographics for Westwood? Mm -hmm. I'm curious as to how this might line up for us. We do. Um, so we, we have from multiple sources, but uh, we had a study commissioned uh, maybe three or four years ago that included uh, demographics, and it showed, uh, it wasn't even close, the vast majority of people who live within a three mile radius of us are ages 20 to 34. Okay. Uh, so I think our median age is 31, which is actually listed on our uh, Choose Westwood for the marketing document for our business needs. Uh, let's see, so moving to number eight, uh, we asked people what keeps them from visiting Westwood Village more often? And uh, um, parking was number one, but followed very closely by uh, that Westwood does not offer the type of uh, retail, restaurant, and entertainment options that people are looking for. So those are the top two reasons why people aren't visiting Westwood Village more often. Question nine, how people normally travel to our district. Um, this one is pretty stark. Uh, they're either coming here uh, in their personal vehicle or they're coming on foot. Um, uh, fewer people, far fewer people are carpooling or busing or rideshare or biking or uh, I guess next time we ask this question, we'll ask people if they're taking a bird scooter or something like that. Um, this is a question we talked about a little bit more at the committee and it was, um, I think we came to the conclusion that if we could ask this again, we would ask the question, how many people are driving here to come to work? Are they parking once and then are walking throughout the village? Because I, I think that's probably a high number. So this question um, could probably be asked again. Uh, number 10, we asked people if, if they do drive, how long does it take to find a parking spot? Uh, uh, most people said it takes between five and 10 minutes or, even, or less than five minutes which if you pair with question 11, which is asking people where they usually park and they say a meter on the street, um, a lot of people have very good parking karma if they're finding, um, finding their meter space is less than 10 minutes. So, um, but it was also telling, I think, that the Broxton structure was rated so high as a response because that we've heard, I think just some anecdotal uh, um, um, evidence or comments that the Broxton structure People don't know about it, they're not, uh, not aware, they don't know about the two hours free, things like that. I think people probably are aware of it, but it still is confusing um, because of its location in our district. So, um, so I think probably a little more awareness than we, we may think. Uh, question 12, we asked people what reasons they uh, choose Westwood Village, and uh, um, people are coming here to dine and to grocery shop. So that's actually the same as when we did the survey before, and it's not surprising to me because those are two things that we do quite well. Uh, 13, we asked people how they felt about the dining options. Uh, fair, one out, but not by much over good. So uh, the committee, we talked about, okay, this, this seems like we're doing good to fair in terms of our dining options and how people feel about them in our district. We asked the same question about retail options, and it was more fair to poor on how people feel about retail options in the district. And then lastly, number 15, we asked people how they felt about our service options, and the feeling was, again, uh, good to fair. 
Uh, number 16, we asked a very generic question. We asked folks, how would they rate the current condition of the village? And we didn't define what a condition is. Um, it's up to people to decide whether they feel that that's a maintenance um, issue, if that has something to do with uh, leasing or vacancy or, or anything like that. Um, and people felt we were good to fair um, in terms to our current condition. Is this the same question, Andrew, that you asked the last time? Yes. 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 Very similar. Um, in seven, number seventeen, we asked people how optimistic they are about the future of the village, and uh, this is a question we ask every time. And uh, our folks, our respondents, are, are optimistic. They um, typically are. So uh, most were somewhat optimistic, but then a large number were also very optimistic, but was probably negated by the folks that were not very optimistic. Um, the next two questions were the last two questions we asked. They're 18 and 19, and we asked people to be very specific with us and to actually give us answers to the questions. <coughs> we didn't offer them the answers. They have typed in to our survey what exactly they felt their answer was. First question was, what specific stores, restaurants, and or services would you like to see in Westwood Village? What you see below is a word cloud, and uh, this basically takes all of the responses and uh, um, sort of prioritizes them or makes them more bold or a larger font depending on how often that word or phrase was used. So what we learned uh, from this is that uh, there's a consistent request for more nightlife and food options, and then also parking is a top choice. So in the word cloud, you can see dining options, bars, better restaurants, parking, stores, um, these are all high. Skyler Gardens is on, Peter's a block out. Um, so it's good for him, he's being referenced often. Uh, and then the last question we asked, what one thing would you like to see added or changed to improve Westwood Village? Again, we did a word cloud. And uh, you can see uh, restaurants, parking, homelessness, dining, movie theaters, these are the kind of things that people are talking about for Westwood Village. The final pages that you'll see actually have everybody's individual response. Um, so you can see to the answer to that first question, what specific stores they wanted to see. You know, we saw Cheesecake Factory, Apple, uh, Bring Olive Garden back, small Walmart, small Walmart more bars, nightlife, uh, restaurants, bars, a gap, more clothing stores, things like that. And then the second question, which we asked, which was, what one thing would you like to see added or changed to improve Westwood Village? We heard, you know, better parking, more movie theater choices, uh, restaurants with live music, nightlife, and expensive parking, um, and so on and so forth. So there's definitely a theme going on here in our survey. And that's our summary. Anybody have any questions? To learn anything fun. We got to get young people to answer this. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 20 to 34. And good luck with that. Yeah. 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 Survey averse? I'm not sure. Yeah. Is the survey posted on our website? Yes. Are you going to encourage the brokerage community to take a look at this? I think we need to talk about how we want to use the findings. Um, but yes. Uh, um, you know, when we talk to the brokerage community, they, they know the void, they know what people are, are asking for. But I think there's a way where we can distill this information to really show, and listen, there is a there is a demand right. for these type of services. That's what I was thinking. So it's only available on our website? Uh, well, the survey was available on our website for people to respond to. We had it on social media blasts that we pushed out, and then it was also in our newsletter. Okay. Is there a way that we can put it on an iPad and have ambassadors randomly ask people on the street if they fill it out. Certainly could. I'm just thinking that, you know, I go to our website every once in a while. Um, I'm sure that if you don't have a lot to do with Western Village, you probably don't spend a lot of time. I'm sure my wife yeah. has never gone on the website. And she shops at Rose. So. I think, um, sorry, Megan, the, the people who access this via the website, did they find it because we sent a link yeah. to them? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was probably more of, a, more of a response to our email blast than anything else. But that's, um, we can reopen the survey to try to get more data. Or we, think it, or, or we can do it next year when we do the survey, but when we collect it, like stopping people on the street and asking them if they take two minutes to pop through a monkey survey on an iPad it should be fairly easy. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll cause the ambassadors to engage with people, so mm -hmm. that's not such a bad thing. Yeah. Um, I like the idea about maybe uh, maybe putting it on an iPad and having people be able to 
to answer certainly that way. But I'm concerned about sending out the results to the brokerage committee because there's a lot of negative things in there as well. So I'm not sure we just want to send it out. But if you see the poor, we're not doing well in a lot of areas. I don't want that to be broadcast. I think it's better just to keep that in house or else selectively uh, send out some information. I wouldn't want to send out the whole survey. What, if anything, was done with the survey the last time? Um, we discussed it last time, and I think I used it to inform our decision making. How frequently do we do it? We last did a survey like this in 2015, I think. And uh, we have another survey that's going on now, which is just very village-centric, by talking more about operations issues, which is intended for our businesses. So that, we've done that survey with a little more regularity, but we've done this one, I think this is the third time that we've done it. And I would say that, I'd say that there's consistency in the responses. You know, if we're gonna be sending out information to brokers, this really should be more in the nature of a piece and accentuating the positives, right. the history, the location to a world-class university, to a world-class hospital. So, some of the things are undeniable. Right. When you want to argue about parking, you know, it, they don't, it doesn't square with what we know, but you certainly can't complain about our location and some of the other wonderful features of the village. It right. really should be sold heavily. Well, being a broker, you know, they're going to be interested in seeing where the demand is. So the questions that have to do with what people want, I think, are the that's ones. Fine. Well, yeah. That's fine. Well, yeah. I don't, the, the negatives, we don't want to tell them about that. They're going to find that out their own themselves. Which they know. They, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they won't even look at that. They know. Because yeah. they're in the village every week. So. I'd be particularly interested to know what people want, what kind of retail mm -hmm. and service right. establishments people want. and. Um, I like the idea of the ambassadors having an iPad. I think we should make the survey shorter if we're going to do that. And I think the main information we want is what would people like to see more of here in the village. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. And we have, is there a budget for iPads for the ambassadors? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, not yet. We do have a, a line item for miscellaneous program expenses that. Uh, be able to cover it. I, I think we can work something out. I say they don't need the high line one. Yeah. <laughs> they just need one that'll that they take information. Well, yeah. but it, it's as simple as if uh, I think that you could probably text it to the person's phone. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you could say, look, you have a smartphone, we've got a survey. If you'll give me your number, I'll text it to you. And you can yeah. fill it out. Yeah. But we're only going to do this once in once a year. We're not. This is not something that's going to be done on a regular basis once a year. Right. And, and you know, you can give them like a charms blow pop or something as a thank you, mm -hmm. some little piece of swag to encourage them to do it. But um, I just think that you'll get more feedback. That is, if, if, right. if, the, if the, we're looking at fifty and up, that's great. We yeah. know what they want, but we need to know what the what the younger people uh, want as well. Unfortunately, I fit into that former category. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going on. <laughs> that survey that you're running now, you mentioned, you can put that on the iPad and then have them go to the business. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Because it can be almost tease sometimes to get the part. Yep. And, yeah, and, and the ambassadors get interact with the business. Mm -hmm. That'd be the other person. You know, we do a lot of surveys at UCLA. Sort of over survey. Uh, one of the benefits of that is over the years we've had a sort of a survey team that is really good at uh, helping us, you know, really refine the surveys. But one of the most important things, I don't know whether this is something you're planning on doing, and if I may have missed that, is to see year to year trends. Yeah. And uh, did last in 2015, I think now. Is there a plan to do this, uh, you know, going forward annually? Because that might be helpful just to, um, once you have a set of measures, to track, to be able to track over time. Yeah, for the audience, a great idea. Mm -hmm. I would I suggest mm -hmm. we're going through the surveys rather than having these sort of random at time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hit it, uh, and that way you can start to look back and say, well, 15 we were here, and 16 mm -hmm. we were here, and 17 we were here. Mm -hmm. We just had a lot. Um, I guess the other point I'd make is <clears throat> for our surveys, um, your point is well taken with respect to length. I, mean, I think it's not extremely long. Um, the other is to uh, see if there's some sort of common set of metrics that other entities, similar to the Westwood uh, 
the improvement association use when assessing their communities so that um, they might be able to benchmark against results for other uh, similar entities, other areas. You know, if people are saying, for example, I, I find Westland to be rated um, you know, on a five point scale and have certain attributes generally, I'd be curious, does Culver City do something and what does their response look like? Um, it, you know, it's a, it doesn't seem to me this was a poor response rate and that things tend to cluster in the middle of the range. It's just also not unusual. But it would be helpful to watch over time to be able to compare to other entities. It's a good suggestion. I mean, we could ask Santa Monica and Culver City what they do. And uh, how well do you know the survey people? You know, I was going to say, I, I, I don't know how, uh, I don't know to what extent I've talked to Michael and others who preceded me, but I don't know whether we had. Uh, whether UCLA has been, is even able to offer up uh, staff to come in and present, but I think as uh, village uh, people, they're here. Uh, I think our survey group would be happy to come and maybe make a small presentation or to review this right. in some public document. It'd be, it'd be great, it'd be great from, if they, give us some, if yeah. they could review and let us know what we're doing right. Because I mean, yeah. surveys can get so squirrely on how you ask the question. Um, and so having somebody who does it for a living review it and make sure that we're asking the right questions or asking it in the right way so we're getting I'm, I'm glad you asked that. I didn't want to offer that up, but I will now that you asked. <laughs> is, I, I, I was, you know, I don't want to go too far, but I will ask. Uh, this is no disrespect to the way the current survey is done. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. let's, hey, let's face it, all of us and everything that we do could use a little unvarnished feedback and, you know, if we're not doing something right, we, right. we should fix it. And, I don't know whether this survey is accomplishing exactly what we want. If there's a professional out there that can look at it. And I think very much Julie Bollinger, she wrote the whole uh, assessment group from UCLA, and she is a, it came from uh, AT&T or something. Really a uh, crack professional at this, and uh, really knows how to structure them. And uh, I'll ask if she can come and talk yeah. to you about making a yeah. presentation. And, uh, we're doing what we like. We'll be in touch with you. Okay, yeah, that sounds right. Any other comments? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, public? no comment. So we have a Steve. Yeah, so we're going to start with Steve on the public comment. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, really think it was a thoughtful discussion and, and picking up on what Brad said, I really think it would be interesting since this is the third time you've done this, it would be maybe good to get a report back to either the bar committee or the board, how these numbers compare over, you know, survey number one, two, and three, what the trend is up or down, and I can probably be really proud of that would be an interesting thing. just want to call out a few things. Maybe no surprise, the number one determinant why people don't come is parking, and the number one means of transportation is car closely followed by walking I just want to flag for you guys you may remember a few months ago you were taking up an item to ask the city to change the specific plan to basically eviscerate your parking requirements and to say that new construction would need very little parking I think like 10% or I, it was some really really low number and um, no replacement parking and no parking for change of use I just want to point out to you please that, that should be a, a warning sign because if people are already telling you the number one reason why they don't come to Westwood is because parking is difficult. Do you want to add kerosene to the fire and make parking more difficult? That's the point I made before, so I want to call that out. Um, I also want to point out it's interesting. The number one category is grocery stores. That's three businesses, Ralph's Whole Foods, Trader Joe's. Those three businesses combined are more than about 100 restaurants and eateries combined because we have about 100 places to eat. That includes the Starbucks and the juice places and the sit down and fast casual fast food. That's pretty astonishing. Three businesses exceed the next 100. That's, that's, that's a very telling number. So we're great on groceries. We have great grocery options. I think it's also interesting that two of those are among our offenders on the homeless issue, Ralph's and Trader Joe's, which means a lot of our people that are coming to the village are really being exposed to the homeless problem right in their face because it's right there where they're shopping. So that's maybe a compelling reason to get these grocery stores to say, hey, we need to do a better job. Um, interesting, the number one, just to wrap up really quickly, number one competition is Century City by 66%, and we know that you know Westfield, billion dollar plus investment, and then uh, behind that is Third Street at what, about, um, Third Street was 
that's what we're saying. Oh, 27 percent. But our competition is stiff. If that's the number one reason, or 66 percent of our our customers are going to this brand new shiny toy, that's something to take note of. And finally, the last point I wanted to make is um, arts and culture and the character of the village and architecture rated number four and five of things they like or reasons why they come here next to proximity to the village, proximity to where I, you know, proximity to UCLA, proximity to where I work or live. So I think those are things to build on and those are strengths that we should be playing up because they are already you know, strong draws and could be, could be something that we could build on. Thank you. I do really quick. Um, I think the idea of getting ambassadors is to front of iPads is great. You could put them over here in front of in front of the Broxton for a day, then maybe up on, on LeConte and the Westwood for a day, down here on Wilshire for a day, so get different points and give them a free bag or give them give them a gift card for coffee when they fill it out. Um, it might be a really good way to get a lot more people on the street um, and the actual demographics that maybe are more reflective of what the village is. Um, a lot of these young people probably are not going online to take these surveys. Um, the other thing I'd like to see is why don't we survey people in Santa Monica, Culver City, Beverly Hills, uh, send out surveys to them, pick 10,000 addresses in each area and see, if, and see if they'll respond, find out why they're not coming to the village. Because if you survey people here in the village, they're, they're already here, most of, them, most of them are stuck here. They can't go anywhere. They have, a, they have one hour lunch, they can't go anywhere. Um, why not reach out to people who have an, an option to come here if they wanted to, find out why they're not coming here, and um, see what we can see if we, if we can work on some mis, some, some misconceptions. But just pick, you know, maybe do it a mailing of 30,000, 10,000 to the east, 10,000 to the south, 10,000 to the, to the west, and see if we can, we, we may not get enough response, but we might, and it might be a good way to find out um, what, what the perception outside the village is. That's it. Thank you.